Hey, how are you doing? We're looking at databases now, a very, very important topic in computer science. Not everyone's favourite topic, but once you get to grips with it, it's not as bad as it first seems. Firstly, let's talk about two ways we can categorise data. So first of all, we can put data into the structured data category, which is where you have fixed fields, which we'll talk about in a minute, with known data types and known meanings. So we have semantics for our fields, is basically what we're saying. So we have some data, and we're putting it in very defined columns basically with no data types we go okay this column is an integer this is a date this is a string so we have very clear meanings as well which is very important if you're analyzing a database you need to know what each attribute means each field means you might have documentation that shows that and we also may have mess data we talked about mess data in I think the images video which means uh, which is data that describes the data so that might be to do with meanings this might be to do with your for the data when it was made and compiled and so on so basically this is very structured very organized and databases are well-defined databases normalized databases definitely fall under this category of structured data this makes more sense when you compare it to just unstructured data which has no discernible structure <laughs> um, difficult to define these two to be fair and so kind of no mesh data which is kind of implied by that so raw text even though raw text kind of has structures in terms of our sentence structures if it was like a, a text file the actual in terms of our information retrieval we can't really use it data so we have to put it into a more structured format so we kind of take raw data or raw text to be specific to be unstructured data so kind of the point is we can't do much of unstructured data we can't do things like querying it which is asking or requesting data from the system so basically we can't do anything with unstructured data until we transform it in some way into a more structured format as you know for a computer you have to deal with very well defined parameters which structured data kind of epitomizes. So it's far easier to work with structured data because it's arranged in this standard defined way. Let's then look specifically at databases, a form of structured data. So a database is a collection of information that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed, and updated. Not a very fun definition, but that kind of sums up the whole idea. And specifically, we're looking at what's known as a relational database, which is where we have multiple tables and they're linked by what is known as key fields, but we'll come back to that term in a minute. So well okay four important terms then for you so first of all table is just a 2d representation of data stored in rows and columns relatively straightforward a field is another word for a column as you visualize a table so this is kind of a single piece of data about an entity so a field is like a column and a record is like a row so this is a group of fields for data for a group of fields for a single entity so kind of like an instance of the entity and so what an entity is is just anything basically an object person thing about which you're collecting data so basically a table is a representation of a single entity that's how you should design your databases and in terms of the actual terms a lot fly around so I already said attribute when I meant to use field because that's what I'm more comfortable with so you have kind of formal terms and you have alternatives and we're kind of mixing and matching a little bit these are the ones that you're going to come across in the exam to tables fields records but you can use alternatives so that can be a bit of a confusion point if you read an article that uses completely different terms they are referring to the same thing it's just a confusion that's um, arisen over time Okay, basically, so the database consists of multiple tables, usually, and each table contains multiple records, i.e. rows, and the records are made up of lots of individual pieces of data belonging to fields. So a field is just an attribute of a entity, so if a, like a name, if, if an entity is a person, you, your attributes might be name, date of birth, address, and so on. Uh, and then a record will be an actual person, falls under that So entity is just a generic person with all their generic attributes. So a relational database has these relationships between entities or connections between entities. So related entities, um, you want to have a relationship in order to reduce data redundancy, which we'll look at in a minute. I've said that a lot so far. But anyway, we've got four degrees of relationships. We've got one to one, one to many, many to one, and many to many. And relational notation doesn't matter so much. This is called crow's foot notation. So for example, one husband marries one wife, which doesn't make much sense, but anyway. Uh, one hotel accommodates many customers, many students, attend a single college and many TV channels display many adverts and many to many relationships you should not really implement directly you have to kind of implement them via a third table which is not ideal so you really want to focus on these first three specifically one to many and the other way around as well so this notation doesn't matter so much but um, it can be one way to show this sort of a four degrees of relationship with his little crow's feet here but the point is when you're designing your database, these are the sort of diagrams you'll be drawing to work out these connections and so you can actually create relationships when you actually make the database. And each of these boxes represent a entity, so a single table. 
And in terms of how these actual individual tables combine, well, they connect with these key fields. Okay, so keys or key fields are a category of fields. Um, the first of which, the one you will always learn first, is a primary key, which is what every table should have in a relational database, which is a field that uniquely identifies each record. So we want to have a column that has a value which is unique for each record. So usually an ID number, an ID number in every scenario is unique to that person. So for example, we've got students and each has a unique student number. And often if this is ID or number, that's a giveaway that it's a primary key. And if you actually see the relation written down, it's often underlined the primary key. So that gives it away that this is a primary key. So this has got to be unique and it's got to actually have a value, it can't be null. And the initial reason for this is so we can target every record individually. So we can go, okay, I want to retrieve a student that's got the ID number of 0001, and that's going to be Laura. So we want to target each row individually, and we need to have a unique value for each person. And as I said before, relationships between entities are modelled with these shared keys. And the point is, you have what is known as a foreign key if you want to have a one-to-many relationship. So a field in one table that is a primary key in another table is called a foreign key. So basically, a table will kind of share kind of a, a field of another table. So if we've got a customer table here with a customer ID, which is our primary key, it's underlined in our schema. And we then have an order table with its own primary key. Of course, every table should have one. You can see here, along with another field, the dates, we've also got another field called customer ID, which is the primary key in customer. And by itself, if we didn't actually tell the database if they're connected, it would just they'd coexist. But they're connected when we actually specify this is a foreign key. So in a schema, it's often written with an asterisk to say that it's a foreign key, which means it's a primary key in another table. And customers and orders are clearly related in normal life, so it makes sense to model them in a database. So you have a single customer with many orders. You don't really have one order with many customers. So that's not what we're modeling. We're modeling one to many with customer and order. So we have this one to many relationship between the two. So you can see Edward Austin here has ordered two items, order ID one and order ID 40, because their customer ID is repeated twice. I want to show you a slightly more concrete example in terms of actual code. This is SQL. You don't need to know about it for the exam, but you may have come across it. It's for interactive databases. So here we're creating two tables, club and person, i.e. a football club. And we've got a couple of fields. We've got a club ID field, a name field, and a country field. And our club ID is what's going to be our primary key. You can see we've got a bit of code here, which is specifying that our primary key is, in fact, club ID. And therefore, it's going to be integer. It doesn't really matter, but it, important, it's got to be not null, so it can't be empty, and it's got to be unique as well. That's the whole point of a primary key. And you can see here we're specifying the data type, var character, 100 characters, and integer unsigned here as our data types for our fields, which is all about the structure data we talked about right at the beginning. For the person table, we've got our fields. We've got our person ID, which is our primary key, which you specify here. And we've also got club ID, which is the primary key in club. And we have to actually tell the database that this is what uh, this is a foreign key, it is referencing the primary key in club. And in terms of the ER modeling, this is kind of what's going on. Ignore the other bits of annotation. These are the attributes here, which was part of my design. And you can see we've got one club employs many people. We've got a little crow's feet here. In terms of putting data into the database, we can insert a actual record. So here for Arsenal, a unique primary key of one here, and the other data for both fields. Then inserting two people, two distinct people, Arsenal Wenger and Steve Bold. Uh, so they're distinct, so they've got their own primary keys for the person table, but they both reference Arsenal because they share, because they both have the primary key of Arsenal, which references the club table. So that makes sense logically. You've got one club employing two people here, but not two people being, but not one person being employed by two clubs. And the key fields prevent you from getting the relationship the wrong way around, so they're adding more structure, more constraints to your data. In terms of getting some data, so perhaps for a website, this is PHP code, and we've got a select statement here and a subquery here as well. So we're selecting a couple of fields from person, whatever club ID equals, basically it's going to be one here because the primary key for Arsenal is one. So we're using the foreign key to reference data in another table, that's the whole point of this relationship. And so if we did a bit of formatting, not very exciting, it's just some basic HTML to put it in a table, we have basically got this from this query. So basically we've got the person table but only for Arsenal, not for the other clubs in the database. And as I may have said, the keys reduce data redundancy where you copy data, you've got repeated data which takes up space in your database and can cause some anomalies when you start to join tables together. So basically you need to separate our entities and you need to connect them where they logically connect using these key fields.